Bula and welcome to The Lens at 177. On today's show, we are speaking to a man who needs no introduction. He's a, a trade unionist before and uh, also was the head of the Fiji uh, Teachers Association. And uh, he's now the Minister for Employment, uh, Industrial Relations and Productivity. And uh, it's Mr. Agni Deo Singh. Bula, Mr. Singh. Bula Vinaka, Felix, and thank you for the invitation. Thank you for coming on our show. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start with uh, just a general question. You know, mm -hmm. eight months into the job, at the uh, head of an important uh, ministry for us with all the issues we had previously, what, what's it been like? Uh, well, yes, uh, uh, Felix, uh, when I assumed this uh, position, I realized there was a whole lot to be done. Right. There were a lot of things that had to be undone right. and redone, <laughs> uh, starting with the, uh, the amendments to the labor laws right. that had been uh, you know, uh, promulgated through decrees in the beginning. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, uh, converted into those acts uh, right. automatically when when the elections took place after the elections took place right. so that's how they put it yes. uh, and uh, these laws were uh, actually in breach of uh, the basic uh, the fundamental uh, uh, international labor conventions that right. Fiji e is uh, s signatory to right. all so many instruments that we have uh, ratified right including breach of the uh, UNCHR, right. uh, United Nations uh, Council on Human Rights. You're talking Convention about Convention on Human Rights. Uh, uh, essential yes. National Industries Decree. The, is, the uh, Essential National Industries Decree, the Public Order Act, right. uh, the Political Parties Act, yes. uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, like the Public Order Act where the police can arrest anyone, anytime, yes. if, as long as the commissioner is satisfied that there is a reason to believe, right. uh, you know, mm -hmm. that this person needs to be arrested. Right. Uh, just the commissioner's discretion and then lock them up for four days yeah, just <laughs> and like question that. them just like that and it was happening. Yes. Uh, then and, and trade unionists were the uh, and, and opposition politicians were the ones who were right. actually being targeted yes. uh, and then uh, uh, the the political parties uh, uh, decree uh, which prevents political uh, which prevents trade union leaders right. not only leaders any worker in the trade union movement right. uh, uh, from the top leaders to the handyman yes uh, uh, not allowed right. to speak politics anywhere. Right. Yeah, not allowed to participate in politics anywhere. Okay. So. Uh, and you, and you, were, you were very vocal about that. When we you, were all very vocal yes. about that. Uh, of course, ILO had cited that as a breach of the right. fundamental rights. Mm -hmm. uh, and then. Uh, um, the f the freedom of expression, the freedom yeah. of assembly, the freedom of association. Right. You know, we couldn't assemble, we couldn't get together. We needed permits. We couldn't march. Right. Uh, you remember, there was only one permit that was uh, you know uh, allowed. Yes. That was during the ITS, uh, That's right. uh, and that was the last one, the yeah. first and the last one, yes. because uh, we had applied uh, for three thousand people to march, right. and then all of a sudden they realized they were over. 8,000 people estimated by the Fiji Times itself. That's right. Yes. Uh, and they got the shock of their lives. <laughs> uh, and then thereafter they said no more. After that we applied nine times. Yes. And they didn't uh, uh, you know, allow a single one without any reason. Mm -hmm. Then of course even when we gathered at the union premises, yes. uh, we would have the, the police uh, uh, tra truck yes. uh, loaded with those officers in riot gear right. parked just outside. Mm. you know, the premises, uh, just to instill fear right. uh, and, and, and prevent people from, uh, you know, participating actively. So it was a very challenging time. It was indeed a very, very challenging time for us. I mean, we were subjected to so many uh, you know, uh, types of treatment right. uh, that actually was uh, inhumane. Yes. 
we are followed everywhere anyway. Right. Yes. <laughs> we were kind of stalked. Yes. Uh, I would often see a vehicle parked outside my uh, office right. and I would know yes. who was there, right. where that was from. <laughs> Sometimes I would wave to them. <laughs> <laughs> Did they wave back? <laughs> they move away. Yeah. yeah. So all sorts of things were happening. Right. They would go and dig up our personal bank accounts to see if they could find anything anywhere. Right. You know, all those kind of things. Yes. Even the unions, my union's account books were all taken by FICAC, right. kept for six months. They couldn't find anything yes. and they brought it back. Yes. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So those were some of the, you know. Yes. But anyway, what, what we needed to do was to straight away, you know, because we were really stigmatized at the uh, ILO. Yes. International image was very bad. Yes. We were lumped with those rogue countries right. uh, that were, uh, you know, at the bottom of uh, the, uh, the rung yes. as far as human rights was concerned. Right. So uh, we immediately got the tripartite forum going. Yes. We got the workers and employers together. Right. Uh, what I did was as soon as I got into the office, right. within the first five days, I was at the FSF. Right. I, I called them, I said, I'm coming. Yes. I went and met with them, ice breaking, had yes. some uh, you know, coffee with them, right. told them, look, uh, we are here to work together. Then the next thing, I went to FTUC, yes. uh, sat down with the union people, told them, we got to work together. Right. And I got them together, yes. and we formed the Arab, constituted it in, in line with the ILO Convention 144. Right. The guideline is clear. Yes. So that was done, and thereafter we got the subcommittee of the Arab yes. to get on with the labor law review, okay. which is now almost being concluded. Right. The Solicitor General's office is now just trying to clean it up. Yes. And uh, ILO has uh, given us a legal draft person okay. uh, as assistance, right. uh, their form of assistance. And uh, this legal draft person will assist in trying to get it done as soon as possible. Right. Then we'll call the formal IRAP. Okay. So next three weeks we should be calling the IRAP. All right. Uh, and after it has gone through the IRAP, it will uh, then be taken back to cabinet. Yes. And then we are targeting the November session of parliament. To have the to, re to labor reforms. Uh, the, the labor law review right. completed and the labor laws then enacted as they should be. Right. With all those, uh, uh, you know, amendments done. Right that are in breach. So that, that is uh, oh, progressing very well. We are actually working in overdrive. Yes. Uh, and uh, when I went to the International Labour Conference in June, right. uh, I made a presentation. And uh, the presentation that I made was on behalf of the tripartite partners. Okay. I was the only one who spoke. Mm -hmm. The Employers uh, Federation and uh, trade union leaders, Felix and Mr. Bhattiveti said, Minister, their speech is good enough for everybody. Yes. So I assured ILO that we were you know, on track now. Right. I met with the uh, Director General together. And uh, the icing on the cake was that our president was invited to speak. His Excellency also yes. spoke at the... Right. Uh, and, uh, uh, addressed the conference and he reiterated what I had said okay. and uh, he was invited as one of the selected heads of governments right. because of the progress we had made in the short period that we've been here okay. in restoring all those uh, you know yes. uh, workers yes. rights right. uh, and uh, indeed that was uh, wonderful yes. so uh, uh, and uh, the direct contact mission uh, that has is overdue now, right. because from 2016 mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, we had signed that joint agreement That's in right. Geneva. Yes, uh, and the former Attorney General himself was there uh, with the Director General right. and the tripartite partners, uh, committing that the labour laws would all be amended. Right. But we never got around to doing it. Well, it never happened. It never happened, of <laughs> course. I, I believe whatever they signed there, as soon as they got on the plane, they forgot. Right. Very simple. Yes. So, 
this time around. So the direct contact mission was, you know, overdue. Uh, will, they, will they be visiting? Yes, we have, in, we have asked them yes. to please come right. and see what we are doing. Right. Uh, and we have said, give us some time, let us progress some work so that when you come, you have seen some concrete uh, action take, uh, has taken place. Okay. So we will invite them. Uh, we've asked for them to uh, give us time and we'll invite them sometime in December or early January. Okay. Uh, so right. the, uh, and uh, uh, in the meantime, we are also sending a progress report to ILO, right. which is normally due in September. And, and that, is, that that a, is that a tripartite? It is a tripartite. Yeah. For the first time in yes. 16 years, right. a tripartite report is going. <laughs> A tripartite report right. is coming. Yes, we have done our bit. Now we are asking the employers and the and the union right. to put in their uh, comments, okay. and then it will go. Okay. So that's how we are working now. Yes. It is about consultation. It is about uh, working together. It is about inclusivity. Yes. And that's all. Uh, yeah. That's that's the of course that's the government's uh, you know philosophy. <laughs> yes. And that's exactly what we are doing. Right. So. That's where we are as far as the labor laws are concerned, the ILO is concerned. Um, trade unions are now free to organize. Yeah. You see the nurses had uh, yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you know, decided yeah. that they were going to. And That's the e fine. EFL workers as well. The EFL workers have yeah. given, you know, they uh, taken their strike ballot and all. Yes. Uh, and now we are negotiating. We are mediating for them. Right. And we are hoping that we will be able to. Our job is to make sure we bring the worker and the employer together. Right. And mediate and find a solution. Yes. Where we can't find a solution, they are free to take the action that they wish to take. Right. And uh, uh, the wise thing for them to do is to refer it to the third party. Yes. Yes. But withdrawal of labor, mm -hmm. uh, the right to protest, yes. is the fundamental right of the workers, right. and nobody is going to stop that. Right. So that's that's how we are going. But would wouldn't it also be uh, you know prudent on uh, everyone's part to ensure that uh, services uh, are not? Uh, what I what uh, what we uh, uh, impress upon all unions is yes. to please come to the table. Right and uh, fi we find a solution. Okay. And we are confident uh, that uh, through dialogue and yes. good faith, yes. we will avert any unnecessary or uh, uh, any event that will actually harm the economy in any way. Right. Uh, we are very confident. Right. And uh, I think we have the confidence of the workers, yes. as well as the employers. Yes, yes. Uh, we are also, uh, we have the, uh, we have made the commitment to also uh, get those 10 wages councils back right. uh, 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 into the system. Right. Uh, they had been uh, all disbanded. Yes. Uh, again, it will be tripartite. Uh, all, all, all wages councils will be tripartite. The employers, the workers and government nominees will be there. Right. And we ha also add on a few uh, uh, specialists okay. uh, who will be able to assist. Uh, and those wages councils will determine together uh, uh, the, the kind of wages we will uh, uh, you know, set so for those uh, different uh, uh, sectors, eh? sectors yes, okay. yes, yes. Thank you. We'll be right back after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we've been uh, talking about uh, trade unionism, tripartism with uh, Minister for Employment, Agni Dev Singh. And uh, now we're going to move into something that a lot of Fijians are engaged in, and that's the PALM scheme in Australia, and also the RSE scheme in New Zealand. Uh, you know, there's so many um, workers from Fiji working in both countries. Uh, Minister, do we know how many? 
Um, uh, yes, Felix, uh, from uh, Fiji since 2015, right. we have uh, had something like 7,500 uh, uh, participating in Australia right. uh, and about 2,700 in uh, New Zealand. Right. So all in all, in Australia and New Zealand, over 10,000 have participated. Wow. And uh, as I speak, there are about 4,000 uh, uh, out there in, uh, sorry, uh, um, yeah, that as I speak yes. for this year, there are 2,200 in uh, Australia. Right. And uh, for this year, yeah. additional. All right. 2022, right. sorry, 2022, right. as soon as the borders opened, yes. uh, in 22 to 2022, yeah, we had 4,000 right. going. Yes. And this 23 now, another 2,300 have already gone. Yes. Uh, so th that's uh, the trend that's uh, being followed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, New Zealand also, uh, uh, we have 2,700. Right. Yes. So we're doing good there, and uh, there is demand for more. Okay. Yes, there is demand for more, but we have uh, we are also after our visit. Yes. Uh, and and I want to share this with you. Yes. Uh, in the last four years, this was the first visit by our minister right. uh, to Australia, and uh, uh, the workers were thrilled to see us. Yes. Uh, even the, the senior staff at our High Commission also, our mission, right. they said uh, this is a blessing right. because uh, when we went there, they even got emotional. Yeah. yeah. Seeing us. Yes. That we care. At that level. Eh? At that, that level. You brought you yes. Took yourself in and uh, we went up to Tasmania right. to see the meat workers there yeah. in Launceston. Uh, and uh, it was a very good eye-opener for us. Right. Uh, there were certain uh, issues that we needed to address that mm -hmm. should have been addressed a long time ago. Right. And uh, uh, we met with the employers. Uh, we met with the uh, line ministers. Right. Uh, we met with the trade union leaders. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, the Australian Council of Trade Unions mm -hmm. uh, organized this meeting and we had uh, uh, the, re the respective uh, union leaders mm -hmm. from the uh, uh, palm workers, from the meat workers, from the caregiving sector right. where majority of our workers are uh, yes. deployed. And they assured us that they will also make sure that the minimum standards are met right. and I also asked them to organize them yes. while they are there. So they'll, they'll be allowed to join unions? Yes, they will be allowed to join the unions. Right. There's nothing stopping them from joining unions. Okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, we were concerned about the accommodation. Yes. Uh, and uh, we have now got a policy. Any, any recruitment done, the employer must uh, be able to convince us that the accommodation is decent yes. before we even, uh, allow, the workers even allow the workers to go. Right. That's how we do it now. Yes. So that's a policy that we have put in place. And uh, also the cost uh, in terms of uh, the rents, yes. the food right. and everything we wanted to make. Uh, sure that uh, you know it would be reasonable. Okay. So those were areas of concern that we have addressed and are continuing to address. Did you see anything there that shocked you in terms of accommodation? Well, there were at least there was one place where we saw in a small room right. there were three bunkers on each side. Right. So six people in a very small room, congested, right. uh, you know, sleeping, and their luggage is there. Right. Uh, and uh, there's no room to even move right. and there is no privacy yes. and then uh, uh, that was one place yes. uh, and then uh, the eating area was right. not all that big right. and there were 170 of them from uh, not only from Fiji from other Pacific Islands as well right. that had to go and cook their own food and eat yes. and some of them would end up waiting until 10 p.m. for their turn right. 
and then go back to work early morning. Yeah. Some of them were actually keeping the rice cooker in their room. Right. So he didn't, uh, and I, I, I just said to the employer, yeah. would you be able to sleep in this room? Would you be able to stay in the way they are staying here? Yeah. And he said, well, there's a big housing problem. They said that. I said, look, I can take all my people back home. We are not starving. Right. You need us more than we need you. Right. So mm. if you don't, then we'll take some harsh action. Right. So, I mean, this was one extreme example. Yes. Others were not that bad. Okay. But not that bad. But we have this area of concern. Yes. Then we have this superannuation issue yes. uh, where their superannuation is deducted there and when they complete their uh, term, they, c they return home, mm. they're able to claim it. Mm. And when they claim it, it's a bit cumbersome exercise. Okay. And then there's a 35% tax on remittance. Wow. So one third of it goes back to the Australian government. Yes, uh, I said, look, this is not acceptable. I, I, I raised this with the minister. Yes. I raised this with the High Commissioner. Right. Uh, and that's something we need to address. Uh, well, the good, the good part now mm. is that uh, our FNPF office is going to open there. Okay. Uh, as I speak, right. our FNPF team is already in uh, Australia. Right. Uh, they have been to Canberra. I think they're in Sydney. Mm -hmm. They're working. They're meeting with the employers. Okay. We are going to attend the Australia Fiji Business Council meeting yes. uh, from the the 31st to the 1st, okay. and uh, uh, the permanent secretary and I are travelling on the 29th. Right. On the 30th, we have organised to meet with several, a large number of employers. Okay. Uh, and we'll, and FNPF will be there as well. So we'll discuss this issue of superannuation, right. how they can deduct and remit okay. uh, with assistance from FNPF, yeah. uh, and then uh, the taxation issue. Okay. So. Yes, these two issues are definitely going to be raised uh, at that time. Right. And then during the business council meeting, we are also going to, uh, you know, seek more clarification and information on this provision in the 23-24 budget that they have, right. whereby they're saying that so many families, yeah, 200 families, 200 families yeah. uh, can move over. And they're saying that uh, so many of them can go through that uh, upgrading their qualification right. uh, and then they can apply for uh, uh, permanent residence, yes. something like that. Yes. Uh, we really want to hear out from them exactly what they propose to do okay. uh, and then see how uh, it works for us. Okay. Uh, that's something that uh, is on our agenda right. uh, for this uh, uh, meeting. Well, what, what about, uh, you know, the Australian 2023-2024 budget, mm. I believe, yeah. um, allows for the workers to get Medicare. Is, is, y yes, is that, that, that? That's, that's all uh, uh, part of our agenda that we are going to discuss. Okay. Uh, Medicare has also been an issue for us. Yes. Yes. So, so you know what happens if yes. they get sick, uh, do they yes. have to pay yes. the full? No, there is, actually they are required to pay medical insurance. Okay. Uh, and then that's quite uh, it's expensive. Uh, yeah, 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 expensive uh, yes. affair. Yes. So those are areas that we really need to look at. Uh, we want to, uh, we, as far as we are concerned, we want them to get the same treatment that the local workers are getting that's right. while they are there. Yes. To be fair to them. Yes. Uh, and uh, we know that the scheme is mutually beneficial. Mm. Uh, we are getting good remittances. Yes. Our people are coming back and. Uh, uh, setting up uh, their own, uh, you know, uh, small businesses or, right. uh, you know, improving their farms, mm -hmm. improving their living at home. Mm -hmm. I know that quite a few of them are going from their villages and they're coming back and improving their village. Right. Uh, uh, some of them are coming with good savings. Yes. Uh, but we want to improve on that. Mm -hmm. We also want to see how we can provide financial literacy to them. Right. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. We, we want to first improve the pre-departure preparation right. uh, so that when they go there, they, they are psychologically fully prepared to expect what they are going to, you know, right. uh, actually uh, uh, be faced with yes. uh, during their work period. 
uh, and we also want to make sure that we, the families here understand, right. don't over expect them, uh, right. have over expectations, this is one problem we have. Over expectations? Huh? Yes, uh, you know, they send money, uh, we, I've talked to the workers there, mm. I've talked to them, asked them how much they're saving. Right. Um, and some of them are sending <coughs> almost all the savings here. Right. So the end of the day, when they come back, there's nothing left for them to come back with. Right. And uh, I've advised them, look, don't do that. You, uh, you, uh, we are Kaviti. Hmm. You send the money here, we will. You, nobody hmm. will save. Right. And I've also noted, Felix, hmm. that once that kind of money starts coming in, hmm. some of those who are working stop working. <laughs> Here? Yes. Right. So, okay. we, we want to, you know, uh, educate our people right. to see that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there's some good benefit from the, uh, yeah. the sacrifice they make yes. when they go out there, you right. know, hard work, mm -hmm. the cold and everything. Right. Uh, so, they, have, they must have some good reward. Right. So, those are areas that we are also looking at. Mm -hmm. We are happy that uh, pastoral care, uh, I have just uh, opened this uh, Pacific Council of Churches workshop going on here right. at the Pacific Theological College okay. in the last few days. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a very good opportunity where all our uh, churches from the entire Pacific are mm -hmm. involved yes. uh, and uh, they also are committed to assisting us right. with pastoral care out there. Right. It makes a big difference because our people are uh, strong in their church beliefs and uh, pastoral care of that nature, we will see that they do not uh, fall on the wayside, right. which sometimes happens. Mm. But there, there is another issue I wanted to raise with you. Yeah. you know, yes, we know they go there and work and earn money, but there have also been some cases where they've gone there and uh, you know they've hooked up with other workers there, yes, other people there, yes. and neglect, neglected their family back here. We have those issues. Yeah. Yes, thank you for asking that question. Right. Uh, I have had a, a maternal grandfather come to me right. and uh, uh, complain to me that the son-in-law out there is not connecting anymore, right. are not uh, you know uh, sending money, right. and not answering their calls, mm -hmm. and the daughter and the three kids are now being looked after by him yes. and he's an old man right. so what we have done we've called up the employer and we've said look uh, you deduct and send the money so you can do that we have talked to employers and we have said right. we will make this arrangement right. if you play up then we will have to get those you know right. strict rules in place okay so we you know as these problems come yes. we try to address them yes we try to address them right. and sometimes people abscond yes and while our diaspora they are very uh, 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 supportive yes. very helpful mm -hmm. we met with them everywhere right. There are some who influence them to abscond right. and, you know, uh, go elsewhere. Yes. And that doesn't give us a very good reputation. Right. So we are trying to convince people not to do anything like that. Right. Come back and then you can go again right. and yeah. keep earning money. Mm. Thank you, Mr. We'll be yeah. right back after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Hello and welcome back to The Lens at 177. We're speaking to the Minister for Employment, uh, Industrial Relations and Productivity, Agni Deo Singh, about the uh, uh, workers in the Palm Scheme in Australia and the RSE Scheme in New Zealand. And uh, Minister, you, you know, we, we're talking about some of the negatives, the yeah. uh, challenges people are facing. Uh, are there any success stories you can share with us? Yes, uh, there are, Felix, uh, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, what we noted in quite a number of uh, uh, farms, 
Right. Uh, we've got uh, people going from the same village right. for the last four, five, six seasons, right. eight months in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have uh, got that very strong bonding right. with the employer. Mm -hmm. They are very well looked after. Right. And uh, uh, they are more like a family, okay. you know, when they work together. Right. Uh, and uh, they are, uh, every year the same people go. Right. And then they have got linked to this village from where they go. Right. And they have gone the extra mile to assist the village right. to make certain improve, improvements within the village, right. uh, like uh, providing some uh, solar you know, panels okay. right. or getting some um, footpaths done yes. or getting uh, some water tanks for them, right. uh, things of this nature. Okay. And the employers have even visited uh, this village. You, which, so, which village do you know where? There's they, a where village in the interior of Namosi, I just. Uh, I uh, no, can't right. remember the name. So the Nomosi uh, people are doing something uh, like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was a very good uh, you know yes. uh, success story that we had. Right. And then uh, uh, a number of employers we met in uh, New Zealand, mm -hmm. where the uh, same worker, same lot of workers are going. Right. Uh, and our workers are actually very popular in terms of uh, being very friendly. Yes. Always smiling. Yes. The are docile, they do good work, right. uh, and uh, they are very, fairly, very well behaved right. uh, most of the time. Yes. So they, that, that's why they are liked by New Zealand. In, in right. fact, the New Zealand employers are asking for more workers from Fiji. Right. Yes, and uh, we'll be visiting them again in uh, October, November, right. uh, when we will be exploring uh, more avenues. Uh, they even shared with us uh, there was this uh, s sudden cyclone in New Zealand yes. uh, and the Fijian workers uh, were out there mm. assisting people uh, who were in, in difficulties. Right. They carried some people, some old people, some children on their shoulders mm. fr in the flooded waters right. across to safe ground. Yes. And, and, and they, they really be being, uh, you know, admired for that. Right. So that kind of respect they have gained. Yes. Even in Australia, mm -hmm. uh, there was one incident where uh, one of uh, our workers uh, had gone out and assisted in a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he actually came and sang at the opera house. Right. He has given that kind of respect. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, workers are, uh, I, you know, as soon as they see there is the difficulty in the community, mm -hmm. they are out there assisting. Right. You know, and after all the destruction, they in New Zealand they even went and fixed fences and things and tried to assist people to the farmers to get back. You know. Right. Uh, so there are a lot of good stories like that. Yes. That we hear about workers. Apart from those uh, negatives, of course, right. that we are trying to address. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. The yeah. other thing I wanted to share with you yes. is that uh, uh, sometimes we have uh, people coming in and trying to recruit, uh, and then uh, cheating our people. Right. Uh, we just wanted to. We have made this uh, awareness. Uh, I mean, we have made this known to people earlier. Right. Uh, we have gone through this awareness program over the radio, mm -hmm. uh, talkback shows as well, our people, that uh, the recruiting agents or employers have to come and register with our ministry. Yes. And there is a bond that they have to pay. Okay. It's 20,000. Right. And uh, then they are recognized uh, employers. Mm -hmm. They're the ones, the only ones. Right now we have six of them. Okay. I think there's one more, seven of them. <coughs> right. Anyone else from outside uh, is not uh, uh, permitted to come and recruit. Okay. Sometimes the people would uh, come and just advertise and say, we are coming to a certain place, please, uh, you know. Yes. And uh, there was one case from Rikireki right. where this uh, man came mm -hmm. and and the whole village was ready, I think, right. and about uh, one busload of them, 
he took their money and everything and told them to come to the airport. Right. When they arrived at Nandi airport, there was nothing there for them. Yeah. Uh, and they had spent a pretty penny. Yes. And they felt very embarrassed too because they had been farewelled by the village. <laughs> so it had to go back home. Yes. And, and um, you know, unfortunately, they wouldn't have confidence in our own people. When we heard, we sent our people there right. to the village and said, look, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't work this way. Yes. But they said, no, we will listen to this man who is, uh, you know. Uh, so a bit more education. So we, we need that awareness program. Yes. We need that awareness program right. with our people. So it's very important to know that. I thought I'd share this with you. Thank you. As well. Thank you. Yeah, I want, I want to move on to something else. Mm. Um, you know, unemployment is an issue here. Uh, you know, we have the skills shorta shortage with people going on these schemes, but unemployment is also an issue. Yeah. Uh, do we have the latest unemployment statistics? Uh, as I speak, the right. Bureau of Stats has just begun this exercise. Okay. So hopefully in the next uh, uh, maybe a couple of months, yeah. we will have some reliable figures right. on the unemployment rate in our yes. country. Uh, we know that we have a lot of youths out there in the villages mm -hmm. uh, who don't have much to do. Right. Somehow we have lost interest uh, in farming, yes. unfortunately. Uh, you know, when we were sharing about poverty in the country, right. uh, somebody said, why are we poor mm -hmm. when we have so much land here? Right. This was somebody from outside Fiji right. who has come to Fiji and seen what Fiji is like. Yes. He said, your land you can cultivate 12 months a year. Right. Your weather is conducive, your right. climate is good, mm -hmm. your soil is good. Nobody in Fiji should go hungry right. yes. <laughs> to plant uh, and grow our own food is very easy. Right. Yet our people are, uh, you know, mm. not, our young people are not interested. Yes. I don't know how we are going to interest them. No. So that's one area. Yes. Uh, and. Uh, a lot of these people who are here, uh, uh, close to the uh, towns, cities, right. uh, in, in, this, in the informal settlements, uh, they don't have very healthy environment that they live in. Yes. Uh, and they don't have very healthy food. Right. Now we are going on to a lot of processed food. Mm. And this is what is causing the NCDs right. that we are suffering from. Mm. We are no longer relying on our fresh belly and fresh ota right. and fresh uh, roro, mm. which is in abundance. <laughs> <laughs> we are not doing much backyard gardening. Right. Well, thanks to COVID, some people have woken up yes. and are doing a bit of backyard gardening. Right. So all these are other areas. And the Agriculture Ministry this time has uh, given uh, quite a bit of additional budget. Yes. Been given budget, good budget, about 38 million more. Mm -hmm to encourage farmers right. to produce. Right. You know, food security is one area that we have a serious challenge with. Right. But unemployment, because of that reason, right. and of course, uh, we have to make the economy grow yes. to get more employment. Mm -hmm. Then balancing it, this side we have our skilled people going. going yes. And uh, what has happened that the big gap that has been created in Australia and New Zealand, mm -hmm. because New, Zealand, New Zealanders are moving to Australia, right. Australians are moving elsewhere, right. uh, and uh, skills training I think has uh, not been kept up at that level right. in those countries as well. Right. Uh, Okay, we lost ours very badly. Yes. You, I mean, you know that saga of the well, the, TV at, uh, the technical colleges yes. that were opened, yes. and in the process of opening those technical colleges, we closed all those uh, uh, the the uh, vocational centres that were attached to the secondary schools. Right. About thirty of them, mm -hmm. uh, and we said no more of those. Everybody will come to the technical colleges. Uh, that that scheme was ex an excellent scheme right. because uh, they did stage one and two at the school right. uh, supervised by the then FIT or FNU later on mm -hmm. 
and then they came right. for stage three and four at the co at the college, right. and they they went as a, you know good trades people right. because they had hands-on experience. Yeah. Uh, so all that uh, gone, and then the technical college uh, within five years. Mm -hmm. The five years that they were in existence, they neither had uh, the full equipment right. nor had the proper you know environment yes. for hands-on training. It was more like uh, paper qualification. Right. And the employers are completely, you know, dissatisfied with the products that they had. Mm -hmm. So all the all of them became unemployable as well, mm -hmm. <laughs> most of them. Yeah. And then they closed them yeah. <laughs> instead of improving them. And we are where we are today. And then <laughs> <laughs> now we, you know, we are getting the universities, uh, the tertiary institutions, to get their act together. Right. Uh, and we're impressing upon them to get the skills training going. Right. We are looking at our short-term and medium-term uh, training. Mm -hmm. uh, we have now engaged uh, Polytech as well. Yes. Uh, and they are opening some of those train technical colleges that were closed. Right. Uh, and uh, hopefully we will have uh, you know those uh, skills training programs mm -hmm. uh, up and running in the next uh, uh, several weeks or months. Okay. Uh, coming months right. uh, and uh, we'll be able to fill the gaps right. but we are also mm -hmm. asking Australia <coughs> especially uh, and New Zealand uh, to uh, provide us with some assistance in this area because mm -hmm. they are getting our that's finished that's products finished. yes that's right our best are going away to them mm -hmm. uh, I have raised this with the minister when I was there mm -hmm. Uh, I have raised it with the High Commissioner here right. uh, and uh, we are hoping that when we are out there in uh, Sydney mm -hmm. for this business council meeting, uh, we will be able to impress upon them to tr see if they can assist us in this area. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. skills training, right. it's very, very important for us. Mm. Well, and the other thing is the apprenticeship scheme. Yes, I was we are just now, about to ask you about that. We are we have now the the, and the 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 in the budget we have uh, uh, set aside a certain amount right. uh, to incentivize the uh, apprenticeship scheme. Right. So we are looking forward to employers having uh, the the rolling out this uh, apprenticeship schemes right. sooner than later. Uh, we we had the NTPC yes. earlier on mm -hmm. uh, uh, supervising this area of work right. uh, in the training of uh, apprentices. Uh, unfortunately, NTPC got uh, you know engulfed mm. into the FNU. Yes. And then the funds that they had, I think, would, uh, I believe the only reason NTPC was, uh, you know, roped in there yeah. at that point in time was because NTPC was sitting with some good, uh, you know, money, uh, money. <laughs> and they wanted that money. Yeah. Uh, so that money was taken away by FNU and then FNU became the collecting agent right. of the levy, the 1%, one one the 1%, this 1% one was supposed to be specifically for in-service training right. for employers right. and workers. Mm. So now uh, I, I believe 60% of that is being used for uh, ACC. Right. Uh, Forty percent. Uh, uh, some was used for the doctor's scheme as well. Yes, I, I think. I'm sorry, fifty percent is there. Mm -hmm. For uh, forty percent is for the private. Uh, uh, the GPC. The PPP. Yeah. yeah. And one one point one percent is left. For is that for training? For, for in-service training. Right. Uh, that's uh, vastly inadequate, of course. Yes. We are trying to relook at how we are going to do that. Okay. We have to figure something out. Yes. And uh, for a start, there is, uh, like I said, uh, there is a budgetary allocation to incentivize it right. and assist employers to uh, subsidize their cost. Okay. And also, uh, uh, I, I believe government is going to see that uh, to attract apprentices, mm -hmm. uh, we will apply the minimum wage rather than the apprenticeship yes. wages. Oh. Oh, so that uh, the, the, what we can, what we will do, uh, I am hoping, is that uh, we will top up 
uh, what the employer pays, right. uh, the difference yes. to, to make sure they get the minimum yeah. wage. Okay. Then only we will attract uh, students coming in uh, right. for their training. And that five year period, most likely uh, they are looking at how we can shorten it to three years. Okay. Yeah, uh, three years or something. We are, it is adequate, but at the same time it is, um, I know, the turnover is faster. Right. So these are some of the plans that are in place okay. uh, and uh, it's about fine-tuning and working on them. Thank you. Well, we've had a really interesting discussion with the Minister for Employment, Industry Relations and Productivity, Agni Dev Singh. Minister, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having yes. me, Felix. And I, always en you, uh, I always enjoy talking to the Fiji Times. Thank you for <laughs> that. Well, we hope to see you back on the show in the, in the near future. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Please uh, do visit our website, www.fijitimes.com, and our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to watch this show and other interesting news items as well. Binata.